Uh, very good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. Uh, to all my dear friends, uh, welcome back to this DADM3. And wherever you are in this part of the globe, once again a warm welcome. And this is Data Analysis and Decision Making 3, a course under NPTEL MOOC series. And as you know, this course total duration is for 12 weeks, which when divided into number of contact hours is 30 hours. And the total number of lectures which will be there for this course is 16 number, each course uh, or each lecture being for half an hour. And as you can see, uh, uh, my good name is Raghunandan Sengupta from the IME department, IIT Kanpur. Now I am in, uh, we are going to start uh, the sixth week, that means we have already completed 25 lectures, that means 5 such assignments you have already taken, we will be starting the 26th one. And uh, each week we have 5 lectures, each being for half an hour, and after that obviously as I said, you take an assignment, you have finished 5 you have still another um, total of 12 one, that means another 7 one to go. So, we are in the sixth week, uh, we are going to do the, the, the analysis of the linear programming concept, the revised, sim, uh, revised uh, simplex method, we will going to come to that and discuss more about the other methodologies in, in non-linear, uh, linear programming, non-linear programming and so on and so forth. Now, if you remember, we have been talking about the basic solution, physical basic, feasible basic solution, the concept of degeneracy and we have discussed, did discuss about the concept of unique solution being available for the case when the number of rank based on the fact that the A matrix which was the basically the, the matrix which has so called the parameters for the x and x is basically the decision variable vector and on the right hand side you have, you have b which is the right hand side. So, x obviously would have both the, the basic, the, the actual decision variables plus the slacks and, and surplus depending on whether the equations are greater than 0, less than 0 and so on and so forth. Now, if you remember we are doing about the sensitive analysis and I did mention Sensitive analysis was basically due to the perturbations or the movement in the constraints, that means the right hand side basically you change it one at a time and you then you find out that what is the change in the uh, decision variables. Obviously, can you can do uh, more than one at a time, two at a time, but obviously in that case the whole set of vectors would basically change accordingly. Now, if you are only concentrating on one of the decision variables, uh, one of the constraints, sorry. So, obviously, we will try to find out the effect of the change of that decision variables on each and one of these x1, x2, x3 till xn considering uh, there are n number of, of decision variables to give. Now, when you consider the concept of say for example, changing the right hand side, whether you are increasing or decreasing that is a different question, trying to find out the change in two decision um, through constraints and what effect it, it will have on the decision variables, it basically is a conglomerative or total effect which will happen on all the x1 to xn considering both of them are changing. So, what is the individual effect which will have on, uh, on the decision variables from the constraints that would not be able to, we would not be able to know until unless you basically do a, uh, a um, uh, analysis of each and of these. Uh, variables individually. So, like say for example, the right hand side are one of, the, of the, if you remember there was a problem where the number of hours being utilized by the machines were 8 hours. Say for example, you can only utilize one of them for 7 hours and, and that one extra hours you are going, you are like one of the hours you are going to reduce in one of them can be utilized for the other one. So, obviously in that case one will decrease from 8 to 7 that means le less than equal to 7, other can basically increase to 9, so it will be less than equal to 9. So, in that case, the total effect which you will have on the machine output on the decision variables like variable 1, x1 or x2, x3, however, uh, the numbers would be would be found out by individually changing, changing them and then finding on the cumulative effect. So, you can do the individual changes like for the first constraint and then consider the second constraint and then combine them to find the result. 
when we are interested in the sensitivity analysis, we are interested to study the effect of increase and decrease of a certain values. So, certain values basically, if you remember for the uh, for the case where the perturbations were along the, the, the constraints and we are considering the concept of um, reliability or robustness or sensitivity analysis and change of the perturbations was only related to the effect of two um, constraints considering the two dimension one and I showed that considering for the normal distribution you can find out that the overall um, uh, the, the center of that circle would basically be the best feasible solution which is inside the feasible um, uh, space and the boundary or the corner points of those, those two constraints when they are non probabilistic and deterministic is the deterministic solution and as you move more inside into the feasible region depending on the level of reliability you will have for both the constraints, it will basically be a circle of different radius and that radius would basically be given by the concept of beta value or the reliability which you have for the constraints. And later on also if we saw, I am just repeating it please bear with me, we also saw that if uh, the variables were orthogonal to each other, and the decision variables and if they are normal and if the variance was same then obviously in that case the circle was aptly uh, describing the overall reliability space or the overall area where we can find out the level of confidence uh, based on which you can send, tell our results or basically portray our results of the decision variables. Now in the moment you have say for example the variances are different, you will basically have an ellipse either in the vertical ellipse or horizontal ellipse considering both are normal uh, orthogonal and as you change the orthogonality of x1 and x2 axis obviously you will have different shapes which would be a symmetric distribution but in that case uh, find, trying to find out uh, the overall common area based on which you can say what is the reliability of the, of the your solutions is still possible. Then when you go into the higher dimension for the case when it when there are three orthogonal um, axes x1, x2, x3 and all them of them have the same variance you will basically have a sphere in a higher dimension as you go they would basically be a hypersphere and obviously the center of the sphere or center of the hypersphere would give you the best solution in the non-deterministic case and the overall area in and around that point uh, de depending on the overall area covered in the sphere or the hypersphere will give you the level of reliability and obviously reliabilities would be different for different constraints you will basically find it accordingly. You have to basically if you remember you, you need to find out the z transformation in the simple um, univariate case and solve the problems accordingly. Now when you have uh, the variances are different for three dimension case obviously you would not have a sphere, it will have a ellipsoid depending on which direction you are going. So if say for example x direction, x1 direction the, the variance is very high while x2 and x3 are the same which are low, so obviously the elongation will be more along the x1 direction. Similarly for x2 or x3 depending on how the case is. Now in case if you have a, an orthogonal surface are not true, then trying to find out the overall cent so called in, in that sphere the center or the in the circle the center or in the hypersphere the center is, is basically the center of gravity the point where the overall um, solution can be found out and the overall area or the volume would give you the level of reliability or the probability. Now if they are non orthogonal obviously the, the shapes would not be a, a sphere even if the variances are same, they would be basically a class of symmetric distribution. Now later on in the diagram which was, so this I explained using the diagram and if you remember in one of the diagram we mentioned that if in the two dimension case the, and they are orthogonal the distribution of x1 marginal distribution x1 or marginal distribution x2 are non normal then trying to combine them in the orthogonal sense obviously will give you a non normal surface. <coughs> Again it is a two dimensional surface but it is not a circle, the center of gravity would be the best optimum solution in the non deterministic case which will be different from the deterministic case which is the boundary points. And as you go inside the overall that reliability will increase or decrease depending on the values of beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 that means how many such constraints which you have. But trying to find out the overall area how it look like the shape would be difficult 
when the the distributions are themselves not normal. And obviously, if you go into the higher dimension case, so for the three dimension, four dimension, five dimension, if they are orthogonal, then trying to combine different type of distributions by itself becomes difficult to visualize also and to find it out. And obviously, in the non-orthogonal non case, it will be um, uh, more level, like more in-depth analysis to think that how would the overall area or the volume look like. Now, having said that in the sensitivity analysis, what is important is that, that what are the basic solutions based on which you can proceed to find out the answers that what are the levels of perturbations or levels which you can have. So, consider this in, in, in the equation, uh, if we have that the equality signs would be into, if, when we have uh, less than sign or greater than sign. Consider we have this equation where um, the equation is actually 7 x 1 plus 2 2 x 2 plus minus 5 x 3 is equal to 250. So, obviously, that would be a straight line. So, if you want to find out and if there are two such straight lines in the two dimensional case or in this case is three dimensional case with there would be a plane, then the corner points obviously would give you the visible or infeasible uh, point we do not know, but consider there are feasible uh, points and you will basically have a unique solution based on which you whether you want to start your optimization problem or not start your optimization will depend on the overall basic feasible steps which you have. Now, in many of the cases when you are trying to utilize the equality sign you can either replace by a greater than sign or a less than sign such that the greater than sign or the less sign, sign, sign would have a intuitive meaning. Consider that I have 10 different warehouses and I am trying to basically transport to 20 number of different distributors. So, it means that the distribution demand is say for example, 20 million tons or 20 million forget about the units, 20 million and the demand and demand has to be met. So, in that case it would mean that the overall requirement for the distributors have to be at least equal to the overall number of combined number of, of uh, transportation which is going to take place from the from the warehouses. So, it is like this. Let me draw. So, consider like this. <coughs> you have 1, 2, n number of warehouses and on the right hand side you have 1, 2 m number of distributors. So, the combinations is like this first one can supply to 1, first one can supply to 2, first one can supply to the mth one also. Similarly, the second one can supply to 1, second one supply can to 2, second one can supply to m. Similarly, the nth one can supply to 1, nth one can supply to 2, nth one can supply to mth one. So, all the combinations are possible. So, when you are looking at this solution, what you actually need the sum total for 1 till n and the sum to bottle to 1 to m say for example, they have to be exactly equal. So, in that case the equality sign will come, but now it may be possible that there in the distributors they are inventories and consider the amount of, of uh, production which is happening at the warehouses or the amount of which is being at then there at the factories consider warehouses is basically very stuff and the distributors are the lower level. Now, amount of, of things which is being produced in the in the factories or being kept in the warehouses which are very big is much more than what the distributor needs. So, obviously, in that case the, the total amount or the sum total which you have, have on the left hand side would always be greater than equal to the amount which is which is there on the right hand side. So, in that case you will you will have, have a situation where the inequality signs would be applicable considering the constraints such that greater than signs are possible. Another can be, so in that case the inventory can be stored in the warehouse, inventory means that you can keep the goods. Consider other case the inventories can be stored in the, in the distributor side and nothing can be kept there in the warehouses. In that case 
the total amount which can be uh, produced on the left hand side would always be equal to less than equal to the total amount which can be stored along with the fact the total amount which is being transported. So, the inequality sign can be both ways less than time and greater than time based on which you can solve the problem. So, in, in that case obviously, the slack and the slurp, surplus will come accordingly. So, let me uh, read it again. It means that the equality sign would be interpreted as imposing supply demand restriction. So, they can be both supply side and restriction as well as demand side as restriction. Supply means I cannot uh, supply more than this. Demand means I cannot demand more than that. That means that I cannot basically utilize. So, in that case, if you have 7x1 plus 2x2 plus 5x3 is equal to 250. So, in that case, if you want to basically do it as in a supply and demand one, that equality sign will be replaced by, so this equality is replaced by the greater than sign and the less than sign. Now, how intuitively is, is clear? Because consider this one, let me go to the next one and let me erase it and, and show you. So, this was basically the greater than and less than sign for the demand and supply depending on number of warehouses in the factory which is there on the left hand side and number of, of distributors which is there on the right hand side. And remember M and N, I have used N here and M here, so it can be interchanged depending on the matrix formulation which you have. If we remember the A matrix which you are talking about M number of rows and N number of columns. So, let me delete it first and then go into. So, consider 2x1 plus x2 is equal to 4. So, this is the equation. So, let me write it down. So, this would be applicable the greater than sign less than sign would immediately come out as we solve the problem for any higher dimension. So, if x2 is 0, x1 is 2. So, x 1 is 2, so this is 1 and in x 1 is 0, x 2, okay, so my mistake sorry, x, x 2 is 0, x 1 is 2, so it will obviously come here and if x 1 is 0, x 2 is 4, so obviously it will come here. So, your actual line, I will draw the red line first which goes is equality, red colored. So, I am extending it to the second and the fourth quadrant also even though it may not be true considering x1 and x2 values are non-zero. Now, consider if I put 2x1 plus x2 is greater than or equal to 4. So, in that case if 2x1 plus x2 is greater than or equal to 4, so obviously z signs would uh, 0 odd co coordinates are not possible. So, obviously, you will have all the areas onto the right hand side including the equality. And when I have two x one. So, this will run the, so obviously the second quadrant and the fourth quadrant are on not applicable even though not and let me draw it in order to make it more clear. So, consider this is the area. So, obviously the common area <coughs> when you take the integration, uh, so intersection of greater than and less than that is the red line which comes up. So, the demand and supplies are, are met <coughs> in the sense that for any equality sign you can put the greater than and less than sign and solve the problem accordingly. Similarly, for higher dimension it can continue. Now, consider this equation. So, your max 12 x 1 plus x 2 you want to maximize is a two a simple two dimension one. You have x 1 is less than or equal to 1000 x 2 is less than or equal to 1500, 1500, x 1 plus x 2 is less than or equal to 1750 and 4 x 1 plus 2 x 2 is less than or equal to 4800. So, obviously, in this case, so let us go one by one. In this case, if you have the less than type, greater than type, considering they are all less than type, so your problem formulation is very simple. <coughs> I put 
slack and the surplus. So, I have max 12 x 1 plus 9 x 2 plus 0 x 3 which is the corresponding slack or surplus which is coming for the first constraint plus 0 x 4 which is the slack or surplus. I am using the word slack and surplus depending on the greater than or less than sign. So, I am not differentiating the less than sign or greater than sign you can basically find it out accordingly. So, 0 into x 4 which is the slack or surplus for the second constraint plus 0 into x 5 which is the slack or surplus for the third constraint and 0 into x 5 which is the uh, x 6 which is the slack or surplus for the fourth constraint. So, obviously, these 0 factors main, mainly means their overall effect on the objective function is 0. So, obviously, when it comes to the constraint it will be the first uh, constraint was obviously x 1 was actually was x 1 is less than equal to 1000. So, ob in that case it will be 1 x 1 plus 0 x 2 because x 2 was not there in, in the first constraint, but x 3 would be coming with factor of 1 because x 3 is basically the sac slash surplus corresponding to the first constraint plus 0 x 4 plus 0 x 5 plus 0 x 6 is equal to 1000. Similarly, when I go to the second constraint, the second constraint actually x 2 is less than equal to 1500. So, in that case x 4 slack slash surplus will come. So, the equation becomes 0 x 1 plus 1 x 2 plus 0 x 3 plus 1 x 4 plus 0 x 5 plus 0 x 6 is equal to 1500. But third comma constraint was in the sense x 1 plus x 2 is less than equal to 1750. So, in that case x 3 and x 4 are already consumed as sac slash surplus in the first and second constraint. The sac slack and surplus for this equation will be x 5. So, it will be 1 x 1 plus 1 x 2 plus 0 x 3 plus 0 x 4 plus 1 x 5 plus 0 x 6 is equal to 1750. And finally, in the last equation it was 4 x 1 plus 2 x 2 is less than equal to 4800. So, in that case it will be I am adding the slack slash surplus which is say x 6, it will be 4 x 1 plus 2 x 2 plus 0 x 3 plus 0 x 4 plus 0 x 5 plus 1 x 6 is equal to 4800. Now, watch here. So, now obviously, it will become x 1 x 2 or were already greater than 0 and we will also ensure that x 3 x 4 x 5 x 6 are greater than 0. Now, remember when you are formulating the equality sign and basically trying to put them as a greater than and less than, than sign. So, in that case if you go back to the first equation. So, the first equation would be. So, the first equation which has equality sign would have a less than sign. Correspondingly you will also have x 1 is greater than equal to 1000. So, if you combine them obviously, you will get in that. Also, it will come into the fact that the slack or surplus which was here. So, in this case less than equal to would have a slack and surplus. So, in this case a both a slack and a surplus would be added such so, as the overall effect of the slack and surplus in the optimum solution would be 0. That means, there is a both an excess as well as a dearth. So, in the actual optimum solution if you are if you are get the actual optimum solution where all the utilization of the materials have been utilized to the maximum possible extent considering the solutions are only pertaining to x 1 and x 2 here as in this problem. In that case the extra number of slack or surplus which you will have here. So, one would be x 3 dash 1 and another would be x 3 dash 2 dash 1 and dash 2 I am basically implying the slack surplus corresponding to the greater than equal to sign for the same equation. Similarly, when you have in, in, the, in the original stage this equality sign is there and not none of the slack or surplus are there. So, when you uh, formulate you will have x 2 is less than equal to x 2 plus some slack slash surplus if is equal to 1500 or less than sign which you are putting. And in the other case, you will have x 2 is greater than equal to 1500 and another slack and surplus in the opposite direction. So, obviously, they would be counterbalanced. I am using a word counterbalance in order to make uh, the explanation simple such that in the optimum solution, the actual utilization of x 2 would be done in such a way that there would not be any slack and surplus pertaining to the solution. In the similar sense, when, we, when I have x 1 plus x 2 is equal to 17500 in the same equation. 
the third one. So, I again this will be 1 and the other one will be. So, another equality means they are being exactly utilized remember that. So, obviously, whether the solutions are applicable not applicable that will come into the second stage. So, if equality sign is that the exact amount of x 1 and exact amount of x 2 considering their continuous variable they will be combined in that proportion depending on the on the parameters which is there for this uh, constraints such that they will exactly match the right hand side. So, in this case the, the slack on surplus will have for both this, this saffron colored equation and the red colored equation would be such that they would technically cancel out that means everything is utilized. Similarly, when we go to the last equation, you have 4 x 1 plus 2 x 2 is exactly equal to 4800. When you bring it here, you have a less than sign and you have a greater than sign. And you can 4800 put the slack and surplus solve it and then you get te technically you should get the optimum result where none is left not excess not you basically required to the reach the optimum solution. So, in this simplex method, so you will search for the simplex you will begin at an extreme point which is the basic solution and at the basic feasible solution you will basically have the standard format. So, let us assume you start at x 1 is equal to 0, x 2 is equal to 0 x 3, x 4, x 5, x 6 are some points. So, whatever the points are. So, which means now remember technically you are starting at the point where nothing is being utilized, everything is slack and surplus and actually you want to end where x 1 would be some positive value, x 2 will be some positive value, x 3, x 4, x 5 technically should be 0 such that equality the, the utilization has been optimum because there is a less than equal to. So, that equality sign has been met and you have reached the objective function in the maximum possible way. With this I will end the 26th lecture and continue discussion about the simplex method and revised simplex method in the later class. Thank you very much and have a nice day.